स्थापकाय च धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिने अवतार वरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम आई बाव जाऊँ जो श्री राम कृष्ण हु इस्टैब्लिश्ड द यूनिवर्सल रिलीजन हु इज द एम्बॉडीमेंट ऑफ ऑल रिलीजन्स एंड द फॉर्म मोस्ट अमंग द अबोथर्स ओम शांति 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 ही पीस 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 एंड वो Our topic: How I became a monk. Sometimes American devotees are very curious. They want to know the Swami's background and little history and all sorts of things. Generally, Ram Krishna monks are reluctant to speak about themselves. We say, no, Sri Ram Krishna, Holy Mother Swami Ji. What, what do you gain knowing me? Moreover, it is hard to speak about our pre-monastic life, about our activities also. When we check the Brahmacharya house, we repeat a mantra: Atma Shlaga Barjaniya. Shun the vain glory. That is a beautiful mantra. In the Mahabharata says, if you glorify yourself, that is akin to suicide. That is the reason our monks do not like to speak about themselves. But these American people are very curious. That is the reason I said, well, I shall tell you in brief a little bit about my background. And very interesting how I became a monk. <coughs> I was born on 16th March 1936 in a village four miles north from Kulna town. Kulna district. It is in British India. That village, very remote, primitive village. No running water, no electricity. Mile after mile, green rice field, paddy field, trees. It is a big village. Nearly ten thousand people. And most of them are all Hindus. My uncle was a judge. He built a temple, Krishna temple, Hari Mandir, in 1933. After a couple of years, he died in Brindavan. That was our family temple. My father and mother they are very religious people. I have never seen my parents eat food without repeating their mantra. My mother was deeply spiritual. She used to fast for Shiva one Monday a month on Shoni. One Saturday a month, one Mongol Chandi, one Tuesday a month. I calculated nearly forty-five to forty-eight days a year she did fasting. We have a very big family. We have five brothers, five sisters. My father was had plenty of land. So I grew up in my village for over fourteen years. 
1936 to 1950. I went to school, village school. My uncle, younger uncle, he was the owner of the school, the children's school. Then I went to the high school, which is one mile away from our home on the bank of the river, Bhairav. Three, four, five, six. When it was five, 1947, partition came. India was divided, India and Pakistan. Our home fell into Pakistan, East Pakistan, now which is Bangladesh. From our home, border is only 50 miles. From Calcutta, our home is 110 miles east. We have a rail, rail line, railway station. And from the town, our village, four miles. You can come by boat or walk. And once a year, there was a big chariot festival in our village from our temple. We fed all villagers. And my one aunt, she was a widow, young widow, married them. Um, she became widow at the age of 14 or 15. As Hindu widow, you cannot marry again. They are very orthodox Brahmins. So she became the caretaker of the temple and just stayed with us. I still cherish my village life. Beautiful, beautiful country. Then came riot. The Muslims are murdering the Hindus. So I still remember 21st April 1950. My father, mother, myself, my younger brother, who is six, seven years younger, and a servant. We left home at two o'clock at night, came to the river, ghat, took the boat, came to the railway station, wonder, nearly 100,000 people are trying to get in the train. Out of fear, they are running away. Some people sat on the top of the train. I had a Muslim friend. He went previous day and stood in line so that we can get a ticket. So we got first class ticket. Luckily, we pushed our mother through the door, packed, packed. And myself and my father, and brother, we sat on our Beijing near the bathroom. Please remember, we'll have to cross 50 miles. When it came to the border station, Benapol, I still remember. Police came and took my father down away. My mother was crying. I also got down. I was 14 years old. I also got down from the train and followed my father. And then I talked to the... She's from East pa uh, West Pakistan. She doesn't know Bengali. And my English also very broken, anyhow. I asked, why did you bring my father here? Seeing me, that officer was telling, do you know somebody is smuggling gold? Got, down, got in, in the, from the railways from Jasur. I told him, well, I found somebody got down in the previous station. As you know, the, 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 the smugglers do not come to the last station, the border station. They come previous and then through the route, route or the crossing the river, they smuggle. So hearing my bold statement, this officer released my father. My mother was so relieved. Because once you go to Musi, Pakistan jail, nobody knows what will happen. 
So anyhow, after we left, I think in the evening, the train, we left at 10 o'clock from our railway station. We crossed the border near, near almost evening. My, some of my nephews received us. Then we changed the train, took to Ranagat, then went to Barakpur, cross changing another train. You cannot believe that what was going on at that time in India. Millions of people entered in Cal Calcutta. They are staying on this sidewalk, railway station, scattered everywhere. Luckily, my sister has a one room, one bedroom apartment. He, she had husband, three children, and my other two brothers, and we all entered there. Seeing our pitiable, sometimes we used to sleep on the roof. Seeing our pitiable condition, that one lawyer gave his living room to us so that we can sleep. And it is on the bank of the river. I used to go and bathe in the river. Very, very difficult time. It was 1950, April. Then luckily my second brother was engaged and her, his would-be father-in-law gave a quarter in Ichapur, four months from Barakpur. There we stayed one or two months. There is no housing in Calcutta, in adjacent areas. Millions of Hindus entered. So, we are just refugee, homeless. Luckily, we got an apartment, three rooms, a small tile shed we rented, got in. But before I got this stage, I will have to tell a little bit about 1944-45. You see, freedom movement was going on. 1942, quit India. British, the Hindus, the whole Indians are shouting, quit India. I was six years old. I used to shout, quit India. Then, my aunt was a very learned woman. She used to give lecture. Three, four thousand people could hear, open voice, quoting the scriptures. But my elder brother was married in 1944. He and his wife brought gospel of Ramakrishna and Sisi Ramakrishna Rupadesh by Suresh Chandra Dattu and Thakur and mother's pictures in our country home. That is the first time I was exposed to Thakur and Ma. My elder brother used to read the gospel of Ramakrishna in our living room and the villagers would come and listen. So from the age of 8, 9, 10, more or less I knew all the stories of Ramakrishna, especially the parables. And my brother would decorate the shrine with I raised hibiscus and flowers, gardenia. I still remember. He has a beautiful shrine. And I used to listen. The first thing I read, it was in our curriculum, in class 7. Swadesh Mantra. Swamiji stock on the modern India. That was in our curriculum. It was class 7, 1949. I read Swamiji a little bit. Then 1949, 50, anyhow. So that was a little bit background that I am not completely unaware of Thakur Mahasamiji. Swamiji. So I was exposed at the age of 8 or 9. Anyhow, that was a little bit I want to tell you that how I came to know about Thakur Mahasamiji. Swamiji. Then, it was middle of the year. You see, I, I, you will have to understand, Indian education system is the British education system. One year, we do not have semester, whole year. If you fail one year, another year. 
we do not have three months, six months, so no. So, six months, almost five months over, May, it was in June. The landlord, our landlord, took me to the headmaster of the Devi Prasad school in Barakpur. The headmaster will say, this boy has come, uh, will he get any admission in the school? Six months over. Seeing me, that headmaster became very compassionate. He said, yes, yes, we shall take him. I do not want to miss one year. So I got in, I worked hard, some, then come summer vacation, then puja vacation, then December, final examination. I passed. Then 9, 10, then I finished the school. Then I remember the government gave us ration cards. We used to get rice, wheat and sugar. These three things government gave us. We will have to pay of course but in a cheaper rate. So one day I came from Ishapur, I forgot to bring the ration card. I brought money, I brought bag, but I forgot to bring the ration card. So I was very sad. I thought, am I so irresponsible that I did not bring the ration card? So my elder brother was my sister's house. He said, don't worry, we will get the ration tomorrow. Let us go to Dakshineshwar. Most probably it was June, May or June. He took me to the Okshineshwar after lunch. It takes nearly 45 minutes to one hour from Barakpur to Dakshineshwar. What year was that? Sorry. 1950. So I wrote about it, joy, about my days in Dakshineshwar, my memory of Dakshineshwar. I wrote in um, that how to see God with open eyes, Dakshineshwar, my dreamland. Anyhow, so, so my brother took temple closed. All temples are closed. Four o'clock the temple will open. So my brother took me to Ponchavati. At that time, there are many trees are there. And the pedestal, you saw that round. There we sat, there is no fence. My brother explained to me that sitting here, Sri Ramakrishna used to talk with the Divine Mother. And my child, boyhood memory, 14 years, I used to imagine about Sri Ramakrishna. There, at that time, there were not too many people in Dakshineshwar. Then when the temple opened, he showed me Kali, Krishna, Shiva, Sri Ramakrishna's room. He gave me a guide to it. And he knew some priests in Dakshineshwar. Anyhow, then I came back. Then another day, he took me to Udbodhan, mother's house. And he knew some monks, Swami Adhyayananda, Swami Samatpananda, Swami Prem Rupananda. He knew some monks. So he introduced me with those monks. He has my younger brother, he will come on Sundays when to visit him. And then I went to Balloon Mat one day. At that time, you see that Vivek on the bridge, you will have to pay one and a toll. So Dukshinesha, then I used to cross the bridge, paying one and a on foot, and then take the 55 bus, then Balloon Mat. So I was a village boy, I told the conductor, I was afraid that they might maybe pass the balloon march. I was telling, please, when balloon march comes, please call me, call me, call me. So anyhow, there I visited balloon march. I still remember, I attended Arati, Swamiji's temple at that time. Some kind of wooden steps, not cemented steps now, not like that. And with Shamaji's room front, the visitors go up, that was not there. Very, Berlin much was a very primitive type of place. But anyhow, not so many buildings. 1950s Berlin much. And not too many people in Arvati also. We eight or ten monks in front, and a 
plus two elbow teeth in mom, men, and then women at the back. Few. And big mosquitoes. Oof. They will inject any blood from your body in no time. So, class H, Barakpur school, every Sunday after lunch, at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, I used to go to. It takes one hour from Calcutta, from the Barakpur to Calcutta. So I went to mother's house and monks, I used to serve them. Do they, we used to do their errands, clean mother's place. Or there are some clothing, some Swami Sarodananda, Swami Holy Mother's various things I used to carry on the roof and sunbathe them and put some black cumin seed and naphthodine ball, moth ball, so that this will be protected. I was a very responsible person, you see. <laughs> the monks are so fond of me, they used to do all kinds of work. Hey, you do this, you do that. So, <laughs> I still remember during Mother's century, 1954, 55, 53, 54, I was the in charge of the shoe department. Mm. All devotees will come, you put the shoe here, I shall give you a ticket, and, and then you can go and see Mother and come back and you give the ticket, then you take your shoes. So I was the in charge <laughs> of the shoe of the shoe department, <laughs> Mother's Engineering. I saw the Mother's Engineering that, that, what is called the, the exhibition in Shu Renabel, on in the, in the middle of Calcutta. I used, to, I used to visit that place also. So anyhow, I got involved with Udbudan, Mother's house. The monks taught me to recite this Khanjana Bhavandana Ong Ring Ritam Pogiting Paramam, they asked me to memorize. I memorized them. Then they asked me, uh, one monk asked me to copy Mohamud God, Kazal of Delusion of Shankara. Still, that copy I have. But I copy this, which is full of renunciation. So after attending the <clears throat> the Aruti in, in Udbodhan, I used to take bus 32 and go to Dakshineshwar. In Dakshineshwar, I used to go to Mother Kali's temple, Krishna temple, and I sat in Chakur's room till 9, 9.30. Oh, they are also big mosquitoes. But I used to sit in the, at that time there was no fence or no barrier. So I used to sit in the western wall facing east so that uh, sometimes I could touch my head on Sri Ramakrishna's bed. But there is a Choudhury Maharaj, he won't allow anybody to touch the bed. I mean, Choudhury Maharaj is out. <laughs> I used to touch my head on Thakur's bed. And that, that court, you have seen both courts of one for his sleeping, another Thakur used to use for talking. Anyhow, I still remember my memories. Then what happened, meanwhile, time changed. My parents again returned to our country home, Bangladesh, East Pakistan. They used to send money by various ways so that we can go to school. My other three brothers are all in school. My immediate older brother, he is now, he is 87, 88, he is now the president of all India, Vivekananda Juba Mahamandal, all India, Vivekananda Youth Movement. He is the president, never married. My younger brother, <coughs> I shall talk to about him a little later, anyhow. So, that way, continue my parents returned, but we remained, I stayed with my sister. I had my own room, 
apartment and my sister had another apartment. She had two daughters, one son. My husband was a lawyer. He used to live in East Pakistan. And it's time to time he used to come. So my, I became the guardian of my sister and sister was my guardian. <coughs> she used to cook for me. <coughs> then this way, I finished the school. Then I went to college. <coughs> First I thought I shall study science and medical line, but Thakur's grace, <laughs> it changed. I want arts and commerce. So I stayed during my next four years in college. I stayed in my uncle's room, uncle's house, sister's house, again another uncle's house. In this way I stayed. But I went to Udbodan regularly. Then what happened, I, I used to read a lot. I was a voracious reader. Then it was, I finished college in 57. 58, I went to the university, brought the form. Thought I shall go for masters and law, something my father wanted. My father has so much faith in me. Even from the age of 14, 15, I used to take care of his bank account. He did not trust any other brothers. So when he became a monk, he was really, he was a little shocked. But later on, he became very proud. My mother was indifferent. <laughs> then when, I remember when I joined the monastery, my father, my mother asked, um, Uncle, well, who will look after me? You are joining? Uncle, four brothers, if they do not look after you, I shall come back and I shall look after you. Mm -hmm. And my father, I still remember, she, he wrote in his will that according to Hindu law, a monk has no right to his paternal property. So he said that uh, if my son is a monk, if he, if he comes back, he will get the... <laughs> he will get the his share of property, you know, anyhow. <laughs> yes. And he had very queer ideas about the Hindu monks. He has never seen Ramakrishna monks. He saw the traditional monks matted here, you know, beard, besmeared with ashes, they bake food door from door to door, and they die on the street. That is his conception of the monks, my father. <laughs> but what happened? He wrote, uh, I am, uh, I, it is all right that you joined, but may I never hear that you died on the street without treatment. I have money. <laughs> he is very <laughs> kind of me, anyhow. <laughs> I remember I met him. After joining, I met him in my sister's home. He was crying. But later on, he became very proud of me. My son is a monk. <laughs> you know, how I look at it, if you have genuine love for Thakur, he makes everything favorable. Then it was 1958, 1st December. I was asking Swami Adhyayananda, he was the manager of Adhyayita Ashrama, and he knew me, he was the manager of Udbodhana, so I knew him from 1950. I just inquired, Maharaj, could I stay in the monastery? He said, I shall consult with Swami Gambira Nandaji. He is the president, then I shall let you know. So he consulted. Gambira Nandaji said, yes, <coughs> he can stay. At that time, I had a job because I was supporting my younger brother who was in school. Well, yes, he can stay, but he will have to do the proofreading. So I got free room and board and doing proofreading and editing. Then my brother also was taken by Ramakrishna Mission, not in the pool. Then I got a chance to join. So it was 28th February, Ramakrishna's birthday, 1960. 28th February, 1960, Ramakrishna's birthday. 
I joined the Ramakrishna order. So I shaved my head, went with other two brahmacharis <laughs> to Belur Mat. And Shami Madhavanandaji was young secretary. But my um, before joining, I was connected with Vivekananda Staji circle. Professor Binoy Shen Gupta, there every Saturday he used to give a class to the young students. So I went to him. He saw me seven age, he thought that in our country, if you are seven age, that means either your, your parents, or somebody died in your family, either father or mother. Then I said, no, 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 I just joined. So he was very happy, my professor. Then what happened? I joined my goodness. It was a huge publication department, Advaita Ashrama, Calcutta, four oil in Chandler, I still remember. It's a central part of, part of Calcutta. Oof, no privacy. One room, uh, one side is servants and cooks, and, and this side I am, uh, my bed, and near my head is the office of the Ramakrishna Mission, Sodisha. Bathroom, wherever is available, run around. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Then there we stayed, I think, two years. Then in 1961, in new building, new uh, moved to Italy. They are a little special, but still two persons in one room. We are brahmacharis at that time. See, 1961, we moved there. Then came 1963. Shamiji Sanjay Chai Prabhavananda came, Isharuj, John Yell, our, that year Vidyatmananda got his Shannash. So I knew Vidyatmananda at that time. I helped him translating that Ramakrishna's photos illustrated. I helped him translating the Bengali part. And huge conference, 1963. Do you know what happened? The Brahmachari who is supposed to be the food in charge, Bhanjari, kitchen in charge, he left. So I was doing photo department, foreign department, and the food department also fell on me. So one year I had so morning four o'clock till eleven o'clock at night, non-stop. Work, 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 work. <sighs> What's the time? And ashrama was full of visitors, guests, people, monks came from all over India to Calcutta to see this Vivekananda centenary. Uri Baba, all of this. Shami, Nikhilananda came with the inventor of Xerox, Mr. Carlson. Carlson, Chester Carlson. So all these people are visitors, visitors. But I am studying and attending classes. But when he joined, Gumirananda was president every morning after breakfast, half an hour class on the scriptures. So he taught us Brahma Sutra, Gita, then Kena Upanishad, I read Sandhu Upanishad, quite a few things he gave classes to us. But in school, five years I had Sanskrit, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Memorize Sanskrit grammar, but still I do not know much Sanskrit, I shall tell you. <laughs> Very difficult subject. But anyhow, then I had to go to the training center, 64 to 66. Two years rigorous training. I used to study 12, 13 hours a day. I became very sick. There is not sufficient food in Belurima at that time. Shortage of food. Oof. Morning, this much muri and tea. That's it. 11 30, 12 o'clock, rice or soup, lentil, dal. Nikhilan, there is some fish, luckily. 
And and afternoon only tea. And tea around the dinner bell will be nine twenty at night. So much hunger. Oof. I used to, after Maruti, I used to drink water. The more I drink water, the more I become hungry. What to do? Sometimes I used to go, is there any prasad there? Or sometimes in the office here. Then in 1966, I became really sick, throwing up. People thought I have ulcer, jivjanam ulcer. So throwing up, throwing up, throwing up. Got my Brahmacharya vows. My name was Gyanu Chaitanya, 1966. That year, Swami Kireshwaranandaji became the president. That is the first time he gave us Brahmacharya vows. Then, I was sick, but I was reading proof that is my job. Hard time. Return again, Advaita Ashrama. Then in 19, working hard, 1970, I thought I should go to Mayabhuti. So they sent me to Mayabhuti. There I worked for Ram Krishna, a biography in pictures, the thing which Advaita Ashram published. Shami Spanandaji wrote the foreword, biographical section. And in meantime, I became the call to the nation for the young generation. I compiled that book. And Ramakrishnan's message, Swamiji's message. Those books are published because I was a brahmachari, so my name is not there. So my ability, few months. In December, I came from my ability. So Swami Nirbhananandaji called me and said, you know, I just got shown in 69, I am talking about the 1970. So Madhavan Nirvana ji told me that, you know, Shami Bandhananandu has come back. We want to send in his place to Hollywood. Uh, we, I suggested your name. If President Morris asks your opinion, don't say no. I, Uncle Maharaj, I never gave lecture in English. He said, it doesn't matter, Prabhavananda will teach you. So, I came to Advaita Ashrama back, thus, in 1971, Swami Vivekananda's birthday. I came to Balloon March from Advaita Ashrama, I bowed down to Swami Gomirananda Ji, who was then General Secretary. He said, well, the trustee selected you for Hollywood. Please try to get ready. Then I said, Maharaj, wrong selection. I am young. I just 34. I am young. Why don't you send some senior monks? Well, the trustee selected you. If you do not want to go, you will write a letter to me. I shall place it in the trustee meeting. I kept quiet because I mean, Nirvana Nandaji told me, don't say no. So I kept quiet. Then I got my passport, I got my visa. I got my green card, you know, Calcutta. At that time, it was easy to get a green card. Then I went for a pilgrimage to South India. I never visited South India. So I went to Madras, then Mahabalipuram, Pokshitirtham, then Kanchipuram. Then I went to uh, Sri, what is called? That Krishna Vishnu temple is there. That that place, Trichinapoli, Trichy, Trichy, Trichy. From there, I went to Rameshwaram, Rameshwaram to 
Madurai, Madurai to Trivendram, Trivendram to Kanyakumari, Kanyakumari to Trivendram back to Trivendram to Coimbatore, Coimbatore to Uti, Uti to Mysore, Mysore to Bangalore, Bangalore to Madras, Madras to Calcutta. So in 24 days, I have a pilgrimage whole South India. Then it was 31st May 1971. Swami Vivekananda's huge bronze statue was unveiled at the gateway of India next to Shivaji, this side is Swamiji, near the Taj Hotel. Swami Hiran Mayanandaji was then the president of Bombay. So we went, we attended that meeting. Of course, I flew, I think, 24th May. 27th May, I flew from, 24th May, I left Adhita Ashrama. 27th May, I left Velurmat, then came to Bombay and with Swami Gambirananandaji and Nirbhananandaji. And then attended that function. And then 1st June 19, 71, I left India. I still remember Boeing 707 Air India. First stop was in Moscow. From Moscow, just transit. I moved around in the Moscow airport. Then came to Paris, Orly Airport. At that time, the Agal Airport was not there. Only airport. Vidyatman was supposed to receive me, but he was there, I, but I could not see him. They, I was in a terrible situation at that time. But luckily, I met some me people who came from Moscow. They are the Indian embassy people. They knew Shami Ranganathan. So I talked to them. They said, they said, we shall help you. So the Indian ambassador of France, he also came. He also received me. So he received me money. Uh, them, he, he received them. So I went with them. Then I said, well, I took my luggage. I said, I can go to the center. At that time, Indian government won't allow more than $100 to the foreign countries to, to travel. So I have $100. But $100? No, 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 it will not work. You do not know English. You do not know French. And your ochre cloth. If some people who will push you from the car, our center is 24-25 kilometers in the countryside. But no, 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 we won't let you go. You will have to come to my house. So I went to the ambassador's house. They called the Vidyat Mananda. Vidyat Mananda again came back from Greece to Paris and picked me up. I stayed, we went to, <laughs> to the to the center at midnight almost. I was exhausted, exhausted. And when we left Bombay, it was so much rain. The car did not take a start, but luckily one jeep took a start. And Swami Atmastan Nandaji and Premarupa Nandaji and Karmabhai Maharaj, they came to see me off at the airport in, in Bombay. I still remember. And at that time, that Mangalarati was going on. And Shami Atmasthananda Ji was telling him, look, 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 Thakur's Mangalarati is going on, your journey will be very good. But my journey was horrible <laughs> in Paris. Then anyhow, Vidyatmananda Ji showed me all important places of Paris, three days. Then I went to London, there also, Yogeshananda Ji showed me all around. At that time, London Center was in 54 Holland Park, which is in the main, city, main part of the city. Now it has moved to Bournemouth, that is Buckinghamshire, it is outside. Anyhow, London three days moved around. I wanted to see the Canterbury Church, so he took me there. And Buckingham Palace, all these palaces I saw. Then. I from three up three days, then I came to 
that's also uh, Air India, 707. I came to New York, Kennedy Airport. Jack and Eric from Ramakrishna Vedanta, Vedanta Society, Pavitranandaji Center, came to receive me because I am supposed to stay with him, Pavitranandaji. Of course, Adisharanandaji also came to the airport. So, John Schling showed me all New York City. I went to, I still remember, I went to the Nimpar State Building on the top. So he gave me a Metropolitan Museum, all those things I saw. Then Swami Nikhilanandaji invited me for lunch, 10th June. Yes, 10th June. And I said, Maharaj, he was crying that I had a desire to go to Belun Mart and roll in front of the Ramakrishna temple on the ground. I was such a great scholar. He was at that time, he, he was developing Alzheimer, forgetting. Then, 11th June 1971, I came to Hollywood. That is Jambu Jet 747 TWA. But you know, during this time when I was traveling, not too many passengers. I got four seats. I lived at the Handrest and just lay down and covered myself with a pillow and blanket and just slept. And when I got up, I wrote my travel log. My travel log came out in, in a book. It was published in Udbodan magazine. Then it has come in the Bibhurupi Bibhakaranda, my travel account. Anyhow, there I wrote in more details. Then in Hollywood, I still remember a Dharamdas and all Tattamoshi and Shami Shraddhananda came and all the devotees are there. My goodness, nearly 50, 60, 60, some monks also, 60, 70 people are there to receive me. At that time I was 24 pounds, lean and thin. Oof! <laughs> then then Shraddhananda ji came forward. He flew from Sacramento to receive me because he knew me when I was a student in Udbodan. He was the man, the editor of the magazine. So he said, my jewel, do you know where you are? You were in holy wood, pure forest, full of copies. <laughs> that was my reception address. And but even though in between, when I came out from the gate, an American stranger pushed our devotees and grabbed my hand and said, I don't know who you are. You must be very important. Otherwise, why so many people have come to receive you? <laughs> so then I came to Hollywood. My Hollywood days already Dharam Das recorded, you know and my days in California, in Hollywood. So this is the way <laughs> I became monk. And last 8th June, I completed my 50th anniversary in the United States of America. It is all Thakur's and Mother's grace. I got a chance to serve these American people. I stayed in Hollywood for seven years. Then I was transferred to St. Louis. Swami Shat Prakashanandaji, who met Swami Vivekananda and a disciple of Swami Brahmananda. I stayed with him one year, seven months. Of course, with Prabhupanandaji, five years. Prabhupanandaji passed away 4th of July, 1976. Then in 1978, 1st March, I went to St. Louis, still I am in St. Louis. And I come to Laguna Beach in summer, two and a half months I work, meditate. Winter also one month. I stayed with the Disney cottage for 20 years. Now my friend Robert Flanders gave this cottage. This is my brief story, how I became monk and what I did. 
and I worked some books for a few months of seen in the, our website and I gave lectures, classes, made three videos, documentaries, six audio tapes, my chantings, plus. So I glorified myself. <laughs> Thakur, please bless me so that may I never have an ego. Please allow me to serve you. Mother, please bless me. Bless me, bless me. Swamiji, please guide me. Thank you. Jai Ma. <laughs>